I have to make a template for each one of these pieces. So I take a piece of mylar and I place it, I should probably just get a bigger one. So I place it down, hold it down very nicely, trace around it so I know the exact size that I need or close to it. If I need to grind to tweak a little bit, mm -hmm. I can do that. Um, but I need pretty close to the size because not all of these are going to fit. Each one of these, whoever did these originally, there's a little difference in each one of these clerestory windows. So we can't always assume that each one of these pieces that were removed from the original one is gonna be able to pop right in. Um, so I have to make a template. So I just made this template. I'm going to trace around it on, this is the new glass. And I need to use, this is actually the back side. We want the textured side facing all the textured part of the clerestory. So I need to reverse. I think it's, do this. So that is the front side. Front side. This way. Okay. So I'm going to take my Sharpie, carefully trace around it. You have to have good kindergarten tracing skills for this. Okay. So I'm going to cut into this glass. curves don't always break the way I want to, so I always say a little prayer and cross my toes. Ah. So now I've got the back side of this, which is the textured side. So this is the challenge, to see how well I made my template and how well that's going to fit. And since I'm using part of the old piece in the old lead, I had to route out the um, putty from this channel. and. There's still, there's still some putty left, so that would prevent this glass from going in really, really nicely. This is the new lead. You can see the difference between the two. So I'm going to use my mallet to tap things in, and it looks like this part is not quite... Here. Okay, so it's this part right here that's a little bit off. Put this down. Okay, so I'm going to take care of this piece right here. I think this is just a little too angled. That looks okay. So I'm going to go on the grinder and just tweak it a bit. See if I can get this bang in there.
sometimes just a little bit of a tweak is enough to, to get that in there. But the problem being, a little problem, it's no big deal, is getting the glass into this lead. The new lead is no problem because that's squeaky clean. But pieces of lead and horseshoe nails to hold it steady in place. I just take these little scraps of lead. If I was to use the nails up against the glass, it would crack and clamshell it. We have to um, protect it with a piece of lead. There's a hard side and a soft side to this mallet, so I have to remember to use the black part of this mallet to tap into the glass. The yellow part is the hard part, and that bangs on the nails. Okay. Um, I'm not going to... Yeah, I am. So now... I am ready to place this lead. You might want to put that on pause while I grab a piece. Say, yeah. I just grabbed a new piece of lead from out in the garage and before you work with it you need to straighten it out. Strengthen it up just a little bit by stretching it. So I'm going to place it in the stretchers. Move it on over to the other part. You don't need a whole lot. It's just enough to get these kinks out. <laughs> okay, so... I use my sewing tape to measure out the size that I want because a tape measure isn't as flexible as this. So I need about 13 and 3 quarter inches. I'm going to take this part off because this went into the teeth of the stretcher so it's a little bit damaged. Thirteen and three quarters. Right here. Okay. Now I'm going to, this is why stained glass is typically built with lead, nice and flexible, makes the process pretty easy. Although there are still plenty of windows out there that are made in zinc. Those are tougher, especially, well usually those are if you have a lot of straight cuts. Okay, so that's about where I want it. Cut the angle right here. It's 
secure that down with the nail. Move my way down. Now, I've got a few templates cut for this piece, but like I said, they're all a little bit different and I don't want to waste any glass. So I'm just going to take a few pieces out and see if, with any luck, if any one of these templates that I already made, I'm just going to, even though I nailed these babies down, I really have to get a good, good idea. So if I place this here, no, that's way too small because I need this part to go way up here. So it's close, but it's not close enough for me. You'll see lots of gaps. This one is pretty good. Place that here. Okay, so this is big, which is okay, because I'd rather go bigger than smaller. So I'm going to use this template rather than make a brand new one. And then I know that this angle here needs to be shaved off just a little bit. It's really as close as I have seen so far. It's almost exactly where I want it. So I'm going to go over my, because I know that I can get some of the original glass. To cut this from. And I want a piece that is slightly damaged, so I can't use that. Yeah, this one here, and I don't want to use it because it's too close to the end. So I can use this piece. That will be the piece that I'm going to cut from. I want to use as much of the original glass as I possibly can. I'm going to make it a whole lot more authentic. Okay, so I want to cut on the smooth side, so I've got to reverse the pattern. I'm just going to trace. A lot of this glass is really very, very brittle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, I always think of it, okay, it broke, that's great, because I'd rather have it break now than break later. So back to another piece. some 
I'm not sure what that is either ground in dirt or some light paint on there but a lot of these pieces that I cleaned had a lot of that black stuff on it and it's not that difficult to get off it's just very time consuming this one this piece doesn't have that much on it tweak it just a little bit with the grinder. It's close, not close enough though, so I'm going to take it out. It has to be a little bit more of a curve, plus there's some putty that's still left inside there. So I'm going to curve this a little bit to match the curve. a little bit more of a curve. Ta -da. Okay, but I have to back this off. There's a, <clears throat> there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a line right here. So the end of this glass has to go on that line because I have this metal that's going here so the glass has to be received right there so it's a little bit too much so I'm going to back it off glass is still kind of wet I'm going to back it off about not quite an eighth of an inch we know that each one of these clerestories, because I measured each one of them, is a little different in size. But I was not going to make a layout pattern for each one of the different sizes, because that would be crazy. So I'm putting an H border around here, around the outside, so that if it happens to be too big, this can easily get cut right off because the lead is very, very pliable and it can easily be cut off. So if it happens to be too big, it's easy, whoever is installing them, to cut that right off. Okay, so i got to throw this on the grinder. So you mentioned it was still a little wet. Is the grinder water? Have yes. Yeah. Um, these are diamond tips. The grinder head is a diamond grinder. And any time you use any tools that have diamonds in it, it has to be used with water. Um, if you don't, it um, dulls the, the diamond um, grit and also heats up the glass so the glass could easily crack. We don't, we don't want that. There's a little bit of water rushing around mm -hmm. here and just enough to, to get the grinding.
plastics back into place. Perfect. So I'm going to hold these into place, this glass into place, so it doesn't keep on popping out, which can be a source of real frustration. going to have to put a lot of tape once I get this done um, put some tape on these parts that are starting the paper that's starting to degrade a little bit um, I have to make how many more do I have to make actually I think I have to make two more after this if I can get lucky twice in a row. Yikes. Uh, that is so far off, it's not even funny. Um, I know I have some more. Is this for this one? Yeah. yeah. Oh. tweak it right down here especially but it's big oh, let me see let me move it up here mm. okay so I know that I'm gonna have to make it bigger here I'm gonna mark it here and that might actually work but I have to make it a little bit wider here and I know I don't have any glass that will fit, any of the original glass that will fit. So I'm going to have to use the new glass for that. So I know right here to be a tad wider and then I'm just going to slowly bevel it right down to the pattern Almost. Mylar is pretty flexible. There we go.
time. Okay, that's okay. Okay, see a little prayer. board here and that's too big so I'm gonna take off a little bit up top here So, it's this piece down here, it's this that's preventing it from going in a little further. I'm going to test that again. Yeah, it's in here. That's the culprit. do especially if it just needs a, a little tiny bit that's actually better but looks good. These down just until I get the outside border on. And then I'll take out these now so I can put the border. I just want to hold this into place so it doesn't pop out. Okay. So I'm going to use flat leg. <clears throat> just opening up the channels to receive the uh, the glass. Okay, so I have this curve down here. I'm going to snip off some of the excess lead here. 
And obviously this is much bigger than what I need, but that's okay. So I'm just going to make a bend in this with a little help. So it's about five inches too long, which I know. And so the other old leg is right here. The end of it is right here. So I'm going to that's about where I'm going to cut it. It's like a, uh, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. So my next step is going to be to solder this um, all together, just at the um, at the seams. Um, because this is old lead, um, it's degraded and and um, um, oxidized pretty badly over the course of 102 years. So I had to take a file. Now I could have taken my Dremel tool um, and scraped it down with the Dremel tool, but that creates a lot of lead dust. And um, this is actually, it's a little bit more labor intensive, but not that much more. And I don't get the lead dust, even if I do have a um, respirator. So I just file it down, right down to the bare metal so that it's going to receive I'm turning the iron on so that it will receive the um, solder at each one of these joints. Now I did file it here, but the okay. So I need to scrape the metal down here. There we go. Uh, so right here, where I have got. I've already scraped that down, but there's a seam right here, and I want a little bit of the solder up on this seam too. So I'm going to scrape this area down, get it nice and shiny, then it will re be able to receive the, the lead, the solder. Right here is good. Um, I've already done this part, so we're good here. There's some very, very, very tiny spaces here right here and right here where it didn't go in exactly because there's still some putty in there I don't know what they used for putty but it was a very very hard putty and very difficult to get that out um, I wouldn't have been surprised if they used um, cement in there um, but in any case um, I'm going to be using a putty that's going to nicely fill this I'm going to patina this black to antique it um, 
that way all of this new lead is going to um, is going to look very very close to the original lead it's not going to look exact you're going to probably be able to tell the difference for a while until it starts to weather and then everything will sort of blend blend in but we want to keep the integrity and the antiquity of these windows so we needed to use a lot of the original um, pieces and as little as the new glass as as possible but but the good news about the new glass the new glass is the exact match as the old glass but it looks newer because it hasn't weathered um, so even though it's the original not I shouldn't say original um, it's the new original glass so it's from the it's from the same um, manufacturer which is Wismark glass now this one is the original piece here and you see a piece of tape here well that's where there's a crack and I thought you know old antique windows have cracks in it and a lot of times you just leave it the way that it is I wanted to use this piece because it fits so well but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two-part epoxy and let me just get it so you can see what it looks like two-part epoxy with a very very thin applicator like that and it, it's going to seep right down inside I'm going to do both sides of that and I'm going to do it twice this is um, actually it's not a two-part epoxy um, um, this is a very very quick drying cement so I'm going to do it twice to be sure that we have a really good connection and I've done it to quite a few of them and it really stabilizes the glass nicely and that's just a small crack it really isn't any big deal and we're using like I said as much as of the old glass as possible All right, let me see if this is warmed up. I need to test it to be sure that it's not too hot because I don't want to burn into the lead. So, not old, a new scrap piece of lead. Flux it and test the temperature and if it can sit on the lead for three seconds without burning through then I'm at the right temperature so I'm going to get some solder okay one two three yep we're good it didn't melt through that must scrap that Okay, so I'm going to start here. So where I scraped it is receiving the um, solder really well. Otherwise, if I didn't do that, I'd just be spinning my wheels. And I wouldn't be getting very far. And you can use a Dremel tool to, um, to scrape it. But like I said, it really does produce 
a lot of um, a lot of uh, lead dust, and you have to have a really good respirator to um, to take care of that. I don't like keeping flux on here for any length of time, so I'm just going to this cleans off the flux. This one was cut a little bit short, so I'm going to add sink down inside. This one here. So these windows don't have a whole lot of joints, which is which is nice. So the, the soldering part doesn't take doesn't take that long. But when I start doing the large eyebrows, a lot of a um, lot of joints in there It'll take some time to do. I think you estimated like 20 hours a window. Yeah, or something. because each one there's a lot a lot of pieces in there. Yeah. A lot of pieces, a lot, a lot to be done, a lot of curves, just a lot more work. So I saved the best for last. And the hours involved is not just the cutting of each one of those pieces um, and templates that need to be made, um, but it's also part of the, um, the soldering process, the puttying process. Um, the patinering and the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this lead here is not the same um, age as this lead here. It's actually two different ages. So this lead that I, I've had for a little bit um, has oxidized a little. So it's taking a little bit longer to receive the solder. But not as bad as the really, really old lead though. Looks like I got all the joints. Yep. And then it's just a repeat on the other side, soldering the other side. And then I'm done with that until I do the puttying. And the puttying I'm going to do all at one time. I'll just take all six clerestory windows that I'm doing and putty them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to mix um, batch by batch. So that's it. We're done. Even though i got to do this side, but you get the idea.